to see a chap I'd, I'd never heard of until a few weeks ago. A man called Frank or Frankie Fraser. What, mad Frankie Fraser? What's the time? Quarter past five. The man's got a reputation as a total lunatic, spent years in prison and wouldn't take one day's parole. Biscuits or toast, well. How have you heard so much about him? Because, because I... the man's notorious. Biscuits, but no ginger nuts. Okay. You're making me nervous. Well, you're entitled to be nervous. You're not going to see a nice man. Well, I wasn't judging myself till I met him. certainly like to be Prime Minister, very much so. Why not? How could I do any worse than we've already had? Do you think by the end of the programme you'll still hold the same views? Yes, I think I will, yeah. Though, if I hear anything that is profoundly interesting, yes, maybe I could alter my views then. What's on the agenda today? Oh, there's a guy coming round to see us. It's passing now. Oh, come on. Hi. Hello. Good morning. What should I call you? Yes. Sir Patrick? Patrick. I think you're right. And what should I call you? Well, you can call me Frank or Frankie or even Mad Frank. Most of my life has been in Whitehall, frankly. I had some experience of being a kind of Sir Humphrey and heard about what you would do if you really were Prime Minister. But I felt, you know, I might have some thoughts or some advice on the kind of problems that you might confront. Immigration. I think uh, what my girlfriend, Marilyn, said, if you was Prime Minister, Frank, that's what you should do. I said, what, love? She says, well, people who come to this country and want to stay here, they should pay for that mm. privilege. Mm. What about the Commonwealth people? There are so many people who would be the very people you'd want to vote for, you know, who are wanting to bring their grandparents over. I mean, you'd be labelled unfairly as a racist, as a man who's putting up shutters to people who need to be treated fairly. Wouldn't well, that be rather difficult? I'd have to be called a racist, and yeah. I'd stick to that. But I wouldn't be a racist yeah. because... Um, Having all the time I've spent in prison yeah. and mixed with people of yeah. all race and religions and everything and got on well with everyone. Yeah. You're going to be in serious trouble as a member of the European Union if you try and shut the doors of people coming from Europe. I've listened to you and I took your point, but I would have to tell you this, Patrick, I have to put you down as a typical civil servant, a typical yes man for the government, but I'd be a tough prime minister and I'd sling your views right out the window and I'd stick to my plans. We're only a small island and the time has come to say no to our European partners, to everyone. No. And I'd stick to that. Frankie, my duty as a civil servant is to tell you the facts as they are. You've also got ideas about pensioners. What's, yes. your, what's your thoughts now? They would be allowed everything for free. Everything. Phones, Travel hour and a half will be fun, miss. I will put an extra penny on a 25p stamp. You want to do something much simpler. You simply want to increase the size of the special premium that is paid to pensioners. Make that much larger. I think, you know, one, one's got to pay for that in some other direction. You might have to cut back some other program in order to pay for it, or you might have to raise taxes. Yes, as we are about with Portugal, the lowest taxpayers in Europe. So, yes, I would up the taxes, 
to help to pay for this, as well as a penny extra on the stamp. And I think it would work. Yeah. Uh, again, I have to disagree with you again. Yeah. Give it a chance. Give it a go. Frankie, would you, in the regime you would impose on prisoners, a more liberal, constructive regime, would you apply that to all prisoners? No. The prisoners that it definitely wouldn't apply to would be all prisoners, sex offenders. All prisoners who are women and children, especially. No way. There'd be no liberal regime for them. Mm. I feel about the sex cases that they should just be buried 20 feet under. I should, they I shouldn't have no only. prison sentences because they're not going to rehabilitate. Well, you can't actually realistically put them 20 feet under, but you wouldn't ever release them from a prison. Well, That's really what no, you're saying. I'll just execute them. When I very first went to prison, you had a card at your door mm. and it said how many previous convictions, what you was in for. And everyone's car was always looked at by other prisoners. Mm. If a guy was in for anything like sexual against mm. a woman or child, anything like that, mm. he was knocked about from pillar mm. to post. I share the same horror, distaste and dislike of sex offenders as you do. But unfortunately, I don't think that if you were Prime Minister Fraser, you would actually be able to place them 20 feet under the ground. I'd personally be their grave digger. I think you're one of the very few people whose case I've given back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank yourself, Lucky. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, Patrick. It's, Thank it's you. been a good talk. And I've it's been wonderful it. to talk to you. Look up. Nothing what you said changed my mind in any way whatsoever. Why didn't you become a prison governor? <laughs> I would stick rigidly to my policies. Come what may. As simple as that. And if I was Prime Minister, that's how it'd be. And sorry, Sir Patrick, if you're listening. My main objective in prison was to keep alive. Because I was in so much trouble with the prison authorities and prison warders. So every day was a bonus if I finished it. On one occasion, I had 60 stitches with prison officers' truncheons on me, head, and the number of times they broke me uh, nose, but that's how it goes. I'm Ron Adams. I'm from uh, the POA National Executive. If I was Prime Minister, one of the first things I would do would be to break the power of the POA, the Prison Officers Association. Yeah. Because my experience the prison, which is very vast, goes way back 55, more, six probably years. more than mine. 56 years. Jesus. Yeah. What year was that? 1939 onwards. And every reform that's tried to come out in all them 56 years, yeah. the Prison Officers Association has done their very best to curtail it or break that reform completely. But in the 12 years I've been in, I've seen the service change, and I know that the people that we're getting in this job now, and that the good people, the I've normal people... I've been very, people. very happy, and very pleased to be able to say, yeah, the POA doing a good job, but they're not. They uh, never have uh, and they never yeah. will. Okay. Get someone like me and they want to kill me. Let's keep they it get let's, out. Let's I'm keep sorry, it they do. Let's keep it reasonable. I'd love to be reasonable. I've seen prisoners uh, with reputations like your own. We've got taken out the, the SEG unit and, uh, and people start to work with them and talk to them and well, find out what's wrong with them. Me, well, it didn't one. because the prison service has changed. It's only six, seven years ago. Well, I can't well, I, I there's, 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 been, there's been drastic changes, I can assure you, over the past Plus, couple I of years. Plus, I visit people who are still in prison. Well, and that, and they still going through tough times. Uh, well, very it, tough. I, I'd argue with you, with you there. there are people who go through tough times, but the, uh, but they mainly bring it on themselves. Well, they should do away with Category A prisoners. When it first came out in January '67, there was oh, a, a need for it then, because there were no internal fences in any prison. I was one of the very first put on it with amongst three or four hundred other prisoners. But now, all Category A prisons are literally impossible to escape. They only have Cut A, the POA, because it gives them more overtime, more danger money. Why don't the POA speak out and say, look, sir, 
We don't need it now. The Cat A prisons are secure. No, no. We, 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 we still do need them though, Frankie. I mean, no. Frankie, no. if I thought we were a load of tossers, I'd tell you I'm going to have the job for me. You can have it. But I think we're doing something worthwhile. I think we've got a chance. To, uh, to help people, to affect people's lives to the better. And, uh, and certainly, I believe this, we've got the officers who can do it. And again, you've got to say that. The well, POA is a professional organisation. You tell now, me. OK, Mary. Normally, I'm getting these out of jeweler's shop windows. Or well, used to, anyway, put it that way. You look gorgeous, Sam. We need a very strong Prime Minister. One who will stand up. And unfortunately, John Major, though he comes over as a nice man, but he also seems, unfortunately, to be a weak man. And the quicker they put Mad Frankie there, the better. We'll go places. We're going to the British Lion. Yeah, it's a very nice pub, and we go there as often as we can. Uh, there's music, live music. Most of the people we know get in there. They're retired bookmakers, printers, publicans. Reformed criminals. Reformed criminals. <laughs> yeah. Several have got caught and done their time. Oh, that's all right, though, you know. I'm happy in their company. I'm Marilyn's dad. I'm Tom Wesby. I was uh, convicted of a great train robbery in 1963. Is that all right? <laughs> Goodbye, Which is a very important thing. I've never bought it in my life. Oh. They, they will oh, oh, they will do I bought it from? They will show you down the road. Carson's own. Yes. The system, isn't it? Well, that is understandable. Oh, but we up to the Prime Minister, make sure that everybody gets a fair crack of the whip. We've got to get them to be proud to be British. Now, you'd think me of all people to be proud to be British after spending so long as one of Her Majesty's guests Absolutely. over 40 years. But I am proud to be British. The only people in prisons I would worry about are the sex cases. Anyone tampered with women and children, I'd be their personal dentist. I can't be fair than that, and a personal execution if necessary. But what's your views on the amateur subjects? Immigration is very delicate. It's a very delicate situation, but you're going to get a bit of controversy in it. My family are actually Lithuania, and my father's just found them after 50 years. So one of his sisters is really ill, so I just think, oh, for my dad, I want to get his sister over. I mean, what would that, what would that entail? And that's an hurdle I've crossed as I've come with, but I'd still stick to my views, no more immigration. I think enough's enough. Enough's enough. Oh, well. Except for them exceptional cases where it's really exceptional, yes. I'll let it go aside. But not a, a carte blanche where they could come, well, my grandmother's ill, where you're just okay. No, I'd have to be strong. So what party would you represent? That's what I'd like to know. What party would I represent? That's a very, yeah, very good unique. question. Thank you, Fraser. Thank you.
lovely to see you. Nice. nice. nice to see you. Nice, Jim. Not too bad. Oh, by the way, if I was Prime Minister, would you vote for me? Well, why not? I couldn't do worse, could I? I agree. Smash him. Thanks, love. Bye. Ta. Being free. That's my hobby, being free and doing the things I'd like to do when I can have a shower, a bath when I want to, jump on a bus, read a newspaper at any time, doing all them nice things that most people take for granted. I mean, I'm a pensioner, I have to go to work, do you have to help pay for the gas and the electric? I mean, you couldn't do it on your pension, not really, could you? If I was Prime Minister, just you wouldn't have any of them worries anymore. I know many thousands of people like you either. Yeah. Would, all them bills would be paid yeah. by the government of the day. I like uh, talking to people, oh, whether it's a road sweeper, an old age pensioner, I'm happy to talk to them. Good morning, morning Frankie. Peter. Morning. How's the dog? Lovely, thanks, Peter. And how are you? Great. Yeah. Listen. What? You know this thing they're doing about me if I was Prime Minister? Yeah. I don't know if you know what I would like to give the pensioners a much better deal than right. they get. But by doing that, to help fund it, that means taxes yeah. would have to go up. You mean my taxes? Unfortunately, yes. You wouldn't get a penny out of me, Frank. Oh, Peter, you can't <laughs> mean that. You wouldn't get a penny out of me. It's got to be done, Peter. I must give the pensioners a better deal. OK. The day your Prime Minister, Frankie, will be the day I will give money for pensioners. Oh, thanks very much, Peter. <laughs> it's you're, a pleasure. You're nice to see you again, Frank. Keep a good up. See you oh, soon. Peter. Bye. They don't like doing it, Frank. No. You know, people with lots of money don't like paying up. Well, they'd have to, wouldn't they? Yeah, they'd have to. I think that's a good thing. I think you'll have to sell a few more flowers to make sure the pensioners get a better deal. Well, what I'm going to be very strict on is immigration. Have we got to sort of curtail it? No, but the the way the Tories have made it over the last however many years they've been in, it's got harder and harder, so it's, it's not easy to get into the country now. You've got to have refugee status, so it's not anyone that can just come in, though. Well, so, I, I accept that. So it's, it's, I it's only worthy causes that are yeah, coming they're, they're, in. Well, they'd only be worthy. They'd, be, they'd have to be even more worthy. And with, yeah, it, and yeah, with yeah. Any, any system, there's going to be abuses, but the majority of people that are coming in now have got a right to come here because they're refugees right. and they're... That's okay, Gary, I accept that. Do you know that there are more people leaving the country than there are coming in? Well... Statistically, it, there are more people leaving this if country. If that's true, that's better still, but nevertheless, I'll still stick to my guns. Do you think you vote for Frankie Fraser, who is running to be Prime Minister? No, I'm afraid not on... just purely because of the immigration. Yeah, I, I don't... I'm afraid not. <laughs> I go along with that. Uh, that's your right. Yeah. Your voters' yeah. right. I accept that. Yeah. And um, I'll just uh, find two more voters. This is the church where Maggie Thatcher got married. Oh, lovely, thanks. Come on, come on in. I'm going to be Prime Minister, or if I was Prime Minister. What a thought. But yes, <laughs> well, these are some of my policies. Pensioners get a much better deal, Paul. Trouble with that is, taxes would go up yeah. to fund it. I'd support you in that, really. Right. The other yeah. one is that immigration should have to be curtailed, that we'll fall right up. Mm -hmm. We're not like... France, Germany, Belgium, mm. where they got borders, mm. Mm. we can't stretch mm. out because mm. if we do, people will be falling in a, uh, yeah. in yeah. a sea because yeah. yeah. we're an yeah. island. Yeah. But yeah. that's my view, but yeah. it may not yeah. be popular yeah. with you. Well, I understand what you're saying, really. You've got to be guided yeah. by compassion as well. Uh, and where you've got uh, people who've lived over here for years yeah. and they want their mother to come and look after her in her last years, 
uh, or asylum seekers. You know, people, if we were to send them back, would be threatened with, with death. So I wouldn't want a hard and fast rule. No. Absolutely no, no I, I wouldn't you know. go hard and fast. Yeah. 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 He was very strong on the immigrant bit. He feels this open door policy sh should still be here. He wouldn't allow me to slam it shut. Well, he's influenced me in his sheer compassion. Mostly his compassion. But knowing me as I am, that compassion will go out the window. I came to this country. Where from? Uh, from Algeria. In Algeria, I was a vet, and uh, my wife was uh, a doctor. Uh, and here we are. That, uh, but why are you here? Because why my life, I... my life was in danger in Algeria. At that time, the government was. Uh, they wanted to kill me, or to why? Because I was against the corruption in Algeria, I was fighting for the, for the poor people in Algeria. And I denounced some the behavior of the government in the newspaper in Algeria. And they took me in prison one month. And then uh, after that, they, they sent me to psychiatric hospital. That just proving to people that I was a sick man or something. And uh, when I came here, uh, it's, it's like a nightmare. Nobody wants to leave his own country. We miss uh, a lot in Algeria. I miss my friends, the place where I was born. Europe now, they want to close Europe. Uh, uh, to go, uh, Europe will be like a castle and uh, the rest of the world is the garden. And they can go wherever they like, but when, why not us? If we yeah. was to let everybody in this country who come... You are free. It's your would, country. We would be suffocated. Do you think Over that worlds. people, when you colonized people everywhere in the world, do you think that you had an authorization to do that? We're talking about 200 no, years I am, ago, I am, but until I inquired into your background, yeah. established everything about you, we until didn't. I had everything about you, you yeah. would be down to be kicked out. Yes, until yes. Until everything but you I will have, will have, You will have that in your conscience. If you oh, have a conscience, conscience, you will have it in your good conscience. Good conscience. I'd like you to say, you British are great. You English are terrific. Look how you've looked after me. No. You're yes. smashing. you Can never I tell you something? Can I you've tell you something? That. Asylum seeker are regarded as second-class citizens. They don't have a right to work in this country. To well, I listened to him, but he, to me, he wasn't convincing. I believe I'd give him the benefit of the doubt. Frank, what would you say to people who might say, what a hard-hearted man? I'll stick by being that hard-hearted man, then, because I feel what I'm doing is right, for the good of this country. And I'm proud to be British to do that. Come on up. Good night. I don't describe myself then. I'm just a guy who doesn't smoke. He never gambles. He likes an odd drink. Respects women, loves children. What more could anyone ask? I'm crazy, I'm crying. Crazy for trying. But I'm crazy for loving you.